You got skills. You got skills, bring it on. Let us get up on the mic and start to spit up on these songs. All these cats in this bitch think they look wicked strong. Don't be afraid to let them know that you overmatched. You got skills, bring it on. Let us get up on the mic and start to spit up on these songs. All these cats in this bitch think they look wicked strong. Don't be, be, be afraid to let them know that you overmatched. I'm that lyricist, doc. Varför är det så kul att göra farliga saker? Framförallt under tonår. Som att klättra högt eller åka fort. Det finns en väldigt viktig funktion hos hjärnan. Ett belöningssystem som sprutar lyckoserum över alla våra sinnen när vi gör saker som är bra för oss. Men märkligt ofta belönar den oss för sånt som är riskfyllt eller direkt farligt. Framförallt under tonåren. There's a reason why humans have evolved to have a highly sensitive reward system. And that's because the things that we find rewarding are things that in general keep us alive. Uh, you know, things like things that taste sweet or sex um, or the attention of other people. And, and we find these things rewarding because we, we wouldn't have lasted as a species uh, if we didn't have these things and if we didn't pursue them. <laughs> Adolescence is a very important period in brain development. There is a maturation of the prefrontal cortex, the region of the brain right behind the, the forehead. And that's very important for things like uh, complicated thinking and executive function. Hjärnan är plastisk, det vill säga den bygger om kopplingarna mellan nervtrådar varje gång vi lär oss nya saker. Just den här främre delen av hjärnbarken där vi överväger och bestämmer vad som är bra och dåligt mognar inte förrän i 20-årsåldern. A second important change during adolescence involves a part of the brain we call the limbic system. And that's very important for um, the experience of emotion, for example, and reward. Uh, and fear and punishment. <laughs> the changes in the limbic system that lead individuals to become more reward sensitive take place early in adolescence, but at the same time that this is happening, we still have an immature uh, prefrontal cortex. So we have immature self-regulation, immature impulse control. And so the combination makes this a time of risk taking um, and, and potentially reckless and even harmful behavior. We often uh, draw a comparison between uh, having, having a car where the accelerator is active, uh, but there isn't a good braking system in place yet. So if you look at crime, for example, which is a very risky behavior. Um, you see that crime goes up as individuals move into and through adolescence. It peaks at around 17 or 18, depending upon the crime, uh, and then it declines as individuals mature into adulthood. And what's interesting about this is that this same age pattern is seen all over the world. Um, and so it, it probably has a lot to do with the basic biology of adolescent development. Anything that is rewarding has the potential to create an addiction, like gambling, let's say. Activity in the brain um, is regulated in part by chemicals called neurotransmitters. Um, and one of the most important neurotransmitters is a chemical called dopamine. Um, and dopamine is especially important um, in uh, our experience of pleasure or reward. And, and some individuals even talk about uh, a dopamine squirt that we get uh, when we are anticipating something very rewarding, like a good meal, um, or sex, or money. And because early adolescence, around the time of puberty, is an important period in the development of the dopamine system, it's very vulnerable to the effects of artificial rewards that look very much like dopamine to the brain when we smoke or when we drink or when we use illicit drugs. An interesting statistic in, in light of this 
is that individuals who start using these substances early in adolescence are much, much more likely to develop addiction than individuals who use the same substances in the same amounts, but who don't start until later in adolescence. If we think about adolescence um, in an evolutionary context, and think, well, why do we have adolescence? Why does it exist as a part of development? And in other primates, which are our closest, you know, comparison, um, shortly after puberty, most primates leave their family of origin and they venture out into the wild um, in order to find a mate and reproduce. And that's very good because reproduction inside the family would increase the risk for genetic mutation. So it's good that they leave. And so I think that adolescence has been kind of programmed to be a time when people might be more willing to take risks because that was a very important aspect of adolescence at the time that we uh, evolved. The irony is that uh, many of the things that adults wish that adolescents wouldn't do are things that feel good, which is why they do them. I mean, that's right, that's why people use drugs, because the drugs feel good to them. Um, and that's why adolescents want to have sex, because the sex feels good to them. And, and, and so, in some senses, our attempts to regulate these behaviors are going against something that is a, a very, very strong biological part of what it means to be a teenager.